Random noise is not the only kind of measurement error that researchers need to worry about. Particularly if you're doing survey research, then uh, you need to be aware of the issue of common method variance. Whether or not you think that common method variance could influence your results, some of your readers and some of your reviewers will think that that could be the case and therefore you have to address this issue head on if you do a cross-sectional survey. Let's take a look at what common method variance is about. Uh, this, here's our example. So uh, we have three questions that are supposed to measure innovativeness and three questions that are supposed to measure uh, performance of a company and uh, or success of a company. So uh, we have innovation questions I1, I2 and I3. We have success questions S1, S2 and S3. We follow the common practice of taking a sum of these uh, I indicators and some of these success indicators, we find uh, that the correlation of the sum of the uh, innovation indicators and some of the success indicators, and indicators is 0 0.3 and we assume that these uh, innovation indicators measure innovativeness, these success indicators measure success and there could be some other uh, variance components, uh, random noise and some item specific variation that we don't really care about in the data. So we find uh, a correlation of 0 0.3. We know that uh, random measurement error attenuates correlation. So we claim that the real correlation could actually be as high as 0 0.4. And then we make grand claims about uh, innovation being one of the key drivers of success. We, we claim innovation as succeed, success must be associated. So what's the, um, what kind of problems do we have? Do we have any alternative explanations for the correlation? It's also possible that uh, these indicators don't measure uh, only innovativeness and only success, but they measure also uh, whether uh, the person thinks positively about the company. So we have this systematic measurement there are S here and uh, it influences all these indicators. So uh, a skeptic to our, of our study would say that we have not found out that the, uh, innovation and success are associated. Instead we have just found out that when we present positive statements of a company to a person then some, some people uh, will respond systematically higher than others. So that is our uh, instead of being driven by the constructs, uh, these are driven by uh, the general sentiment of the person and they don't really, uh, and the correlation is not really a, a reflection of any theoretical relationship. Let's take another example. Uh, this is from uh, a paper published in Information Systems Research and uh, we have a question on uh, scales uh, about information quality we have a scale about accuracy and we have a scale about completeness of information. And these are about government information systems. Now the question is that uh, measures correlate. Accuracy one and completeness one correlate. So what can we, uh, what can we say? We can say that they measure uh, two different constructs and the constructs are correlated. A skeptic would say that no, these indicators don't measure two different constructs. Instead, they measure uh, hostility toward government. So particularly if you do this in the United States, where I think this research was done, there are people who really think that government shouldn't be doing any services for people and uh, they are openly hostile toward government. So if you're hostile toward government, you're going to rate all these indicators uh, to, to, to small numbers. And if you like government services, you'll rate them to, to high numbers, regardless of uh, the accuracy of data and completeness of the data. This, uh, or they could just measure uh, how much the informant wants to answer uh, ones versus fives when asked to, to agree on an item. So that's also possible. This issue is called uh, common method variance. So the idea of common method variance is that the correlation between two indicators is not driven by the correlation between the constructs, but instead it's, a func it's an outcome of the measurement process. So some people like to measure the answer to the center of the scale, some people like to answer to the ends, and that causes a small correlation. 
whether the correlation between indicators is entirely or partly influenced by method variance is uh, one issue. But the thing is that if a reviewer challenges you that uh, you have this problem, you have to be uh, able to demonstrate that you don't. Or it's also possible that you have it, in which case you have to understand how to avoid it. And um, to avoid the problem and argue why we wouldn't have a common method variance problem if we really believe so we have to understand the different sources of method variance. So why does a method or how a measurement method can in induce variation into our data. Uh, there's a good paper or actually a series of papers uh, written by uh, Philip Podsekov and his co-authors and uh, they have this um, 2003 paper which is the, uh, the most cited one. They have this big table uh, where they list all kinds of different reasons why uh, survey indicators could be correlated. So it is possible that uh, in indicators are correlated because you ask, they ask them from the same person. So if you have, have the same person responding to your inno innovation questions and success questions, then that can cause a correlation between those indicators because of people's tendency to respond to survey questions. It's also possible that there's social desirability bias. So uh, some indicators, some items, um, it's very difficult to agree on. For example, if you ask somebody whether they have committed a crime or not, it's very difficult to say that you have committed a crime. And uh, even if you were, if you ask the same person whether they have driven over the speed limit, then uh, they would agree more uh, easily because there's less social desirability to agree on that indicator. Then uh, there are also uh, item context effects. So if you ask the question first that makes people angry, then that will influence all subsequent indicator responses. Or if you have a, a question of whether uh, the company is innovative or not, and then you have uh, indicator indicators after that that measure specific aspects or specific consequences of innovativeness, then the general question will prime the person to answer positively or negatively to the remaining questions depending on how they answer the first question. And then there's the measurement context effects like uh, some people uh, want to answer in a specific way using when using a uh, paper and pen, some people answer in a specific way in online forms and that can cause barriers. So there are many, many different ways uh, why your survey uh, indicators can become correlated that is not due to the theoretical constructs. Is this a big problem then? Well, there is uh, quite a lot of disagreements. There are the big problem, whether you think it's a big problem or not, uh, is not as relevant as the fact that if you do survey-based studies, some of your readers and reviewers will think that it's a big problem. And they have studies that they can cite to demonstrate that this is actually a big thing. For example, in this paper by uh, Podsekov in 2012, they indicated uh, they, they uh, reviewed studies that assess the prevalence of method variance. So how much of the variation in our indicators are due to the measurement method and how much due to the actual construct of the trade being measured. And they found out that in the method that they applied revealed that about one-fifth or one-fourth of the variance in the data is due to the method about half or a bit less is due to the trait. So the method variance is about half of the variation of the actual trait. So if you're reliable variation, then this implies that of that reliable variation, about 66% uh, uh, is the actual thing that you want to measure, about 33 is a method variance. And then remaining is the random noise or unreliability. You can of course challenge this kind of uh, studies based on uh, on questioning their methods and, and so on. But the, the point is that uh, this is a potential problem. And if a reviewer uh, says that you have a problem, it is difficult to address it. And oftentimes they do. You have to understand um, beyond um, the problem itself, you have to understand that it has, uh, if it exists, it has ser serious consequences. In random measurement, the random noise here, we are uh, discussed before that if we have a real correlation of 0.5, then perfectly uh, perfect measurement gives us a very close estimate of the true correlation if our sample size is large enough. Here it's 300, which is definitely large enough. If we have random noise in the data, 
then uh, the correlations will be underestimated or attenuated. Here it's uh, the reliability is 50 percent and this is uh, attenuated by about uh, minus 40 percent. So instead of 0.5 we have 0.29. Uh, systematic measurement error here, we have a systematic error here, is more problematic because it inflates the correlation estimate. So uh, in this case uh, x and y both measure uh, the latent x and y that we're interested in and there is a systematic measurement error source that is uh, equally strong as, as x and y. So observed x is half of the systematic error and half of the latent x. So it's 50% uh, systematic error 50% construct variance and that will cause serious overestimation of the relationships. So in this case um, the relationship is overestimated by more than 50%. So the real correlation is 0.5 and we're estimated at 0.77. The common method variance problem is um, a big deal because uh, not only because it inflates existing correlations it will also indicate that correlations exist when in reality they do not. So in this case even if x and y would be uh, completely uncorrelated the estimated correlation would be in around uh, 0.5 ballpark. So that's you're concluding a strong effect when none exists. And this is the reason why uh, we, can, we can deal with unreliability. So unreliability we just uh, know that the uh, effects are on average it's a bit smaller than they, what just they should be. But here with uh, systematic measurement error the problem is that we can find substantially large effects when none exist and therefore this is a big problem. It's um, such an uh, important issue that some journals are actively discouraging cross-sectional surveys. So of course when you have a uh, a survey study where you ask uh, using the same scale format at the same uh, occasion, the same person you ask two questions, then they could be correlated. And uh, that this is one of the reasons why, why journals are, are recommended against cross-sectional studies. So the recommendation is that instead of doing a cross-sectional study, do uh, a study where you measure uh, the dip independent variables with a survey and then measure the dependent variable using some other means. If nothing else, then uh, at least use a second survey. This of course helps also if you use two surveys. It helps you to establish the causal order by measuring the uh, effect after the cause. So that allows you to uh, take into account or, or argue the second condition for causality. Let's take a look at our example. So um, how would we improve this? Um, possibly common method variance contaminated survey form. We could of course do a second survey where we ask the performance uh, or success implications, ask that half a year later, one year later. But even better if we study companies we don't actually have to measure uh, this success with a survey. We can rely on accounting data. So we wait two years then we get the actual accounting data what kind of uh, growth or what kind of innovative, uh, what kind of profitability the, the company actually uh, reported and then we compare whether those companies that were innovative grew more or were more profitable than less innovative companies. One good strategy for implementing this kind of study is that oftentimes when you write a paper you first write it to a conference and then you write the better version that you try to publish in a journal is that you can collect the success data or, or performance data using a survey first and then you write the paper using the survey data as the dependent variable for the conference. Then you get some feedback and uh, maybe one year later you have visited the conference, gotten the feedback, then you start to work toward uh, the, the journal paper. When the journal paper is, is uh, done then by that time you will have the actual accounting measures available because it typically takes uh, a year or two from the idea to a publishable journal paper if you do the conference presentation in between. So you can do first uh, the conference with survey data then uh, switch to a better uh, dependent variable by using actual accounting data and this also uh, helps you to avoid the concern that you're just trying to republish the same study that you presented in a conference in a journal because when you have a different dependent variable then no one can argue that it's the same study anymore.